I'm going to say, like, I think it's, it's both, right? Like, this is a momentum trade right now. When companies are raising money via an ICO or any sort of tokenized asset, it's a momentum trade. And so any investor doesn't want, it's very hard to be the first investor. If you're the first investor, you want better terms. And everyone looks around them for experts. And unlike venture capital, where anywhere in the world I can find 20 guys in any community, it takes me five minutes to find the 10 best investors in that community and all the angels around them and call them and ask them and vet an entrepreneur, that doesn't exist in crypto. And so you look to the community as a sort of alpha signal of the success of this product or service in aggregating a group of people to make the business successful. And I would actually argue it's a better measure. Like, so Foundry Ventures, who invested in my last startup, has, they used AngelList at the time, it was super innovative, and they would put 100K of seed money in a company and then they'd syndicate it. And part of why they did that was because they were lazy and they didn't want to raise a really big seed fund because the returns aren't very good, but also because it allowed the companies to have a whole set of investors that they never would have had access to. And speaking as a founder, the 100 guys who were in my syndicate were exponentially more valuable than Foundry, who returned my calls politely the four times I called them, but they didn't really bring a lot of value. But those 100 people made the business save, like, saved my business numerous times. And so I think your community is both investor, contributor, collaborator, partner, and it's a really powerful mechanism that people undervalue today because they just view it as get 10,000 people in Telegram and then I'll get $10 million. <laughs> Don't forget that the 10,000 people can be uh, joined to the Telegram group with a bot. So that's uh, so, uh, unless also you use something to, to, to unless consider. Unless you use one of our companies, we'll block those bots. <laughs> <laughs> um, now it's time uh, for uh, some questions from you, if you have, please. Uh, we actually discussed the white papers and basically you said that you do not really like look at it and it's more of a performance after you raise the money. Uh, but I work for ICO rating agency and we actually look at those white papers a lot and also we sign the NDAs with the project and get like the financial information that they have like Excel's with their calculation of market expenses and stuff. So what do you think about that? Is it the sufficient information to evaluate the ICO or it, 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 like, it doesn't affect the risk at all? Um. If you invest, always do your own due diligence. Yes, we have seen it during the financial crisis. If you live to rating agencies who get paid by those who make the money, yes, we, well, we all have paid our taxes for this. Um, so always do your own due diligence as an investor. Always read the white paper, meet the team. I have a rule of thumb. If I invest, let's say, above 100K, I meet the team. Below 100K, I don't. I mean, I have done investments in Panama, uh, in, 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 in New Zealand and so forth, just based on Skype calls or just on references or syndicates or so forth. So it depends a little bit. And the, the, more, the larger the ticket, the more you do due diligence. And then you maybe also read the white paper. Sometimes you also read the pitch deck and so forth. Um, and and last, last thing, I personally believe the white paper is mostly for yourself, for the team to figure out what is my strategy, what do I want, who's my core team, what are my metrics. Like a business plan, you never write the business plan for an investor, you write it for yourself or for the bank, because they want this stuff. I was going to say, I do not want the quote from me, from this panel, to be, Titus says white papers don't matter, because they absolutely matter, for exactly the reason he just said. I just said I don't read them, someone else at our capital reads them. Um, for me, it's all about people, it's about momentum, and it's about the opportunity, the size of the opportunity. So I've seen a million business plans that were great little businesses that would probably double in size. And I hope they actually do a little tiny ICO of their friends and family in the way the old ICO model and do that idea because it's cool. I use some of those products. But as an investor, I'm only interested in doing things that have an exponential impact on society and an exponential opportunity for return of capital. And by taking those bigger bets, I'm going to lose more money in the near term, but I'm going to make more money in the long term is, my, is the guess I'm making. We'll see in 10 years if I'm right. Thank you. Um, anyone else wants to add? No. I uh, wanted to add, we didn't really discuss the methodology of evaluating the market price of the blockchain companies. Like, maybe you have some opinion about that. Yeah, I know, but just... <laughs> Just share the, the, something. The short that you answer: have. there's, there, there, there's, there's not, nothing. So I'm, I'm kidding. A anyone wants to answer that? No. <laughs> you depends. Oh, I can't. So outside of blockchain, just for every valuation, 
depends on your city, depends on your background, how much money do you bring in, in, in the company yourself, how, what is the competition amongst investors, uh, how big is your market, how much cash will you burn. There are so many factors. And at the end, you, you can do the math, and if you are long enough in the game, you have a rule of thumb, and you, you know, okay, this is an undervalued deal, you, you feel this, or you think this is way too high, and you tell them, well, half the valuation is better too. But very few have clue, and I've seen craziest valuations and very good opportunistic deals it is a crazy game at the end it's supply and demand and go ahead please no 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 go um i think there's a high level big packet of information that's not public and that's all the factors that are market making which is where investors invest in what they look at it's not information that's public how deals happen OTC, which deals and prices happen in different geographies and so on. Um, there's not always games played by the rules and this information, if you don't know that this is the make or break of, of an investment and that requires you to talk to people, talk to people, talk to people, be out there, see what's going on, be in the field and experiment with it rather than looking at available information that's there and I find it that's actually why I find the ICO rating sites uh, and <laughs> won't make friends to say this but I find them dangerous especially for for the public to invest more in ICOs because the if you go by those ratings uh, it's it's just misleading and from the inside like with the Herdius ICO I mean there are people who have never been in touch with us who are able on ICO rating sites to comment on it and influence the rating on it. So I think the algorithms there are not sufficiently working to be a, a reliable source of information. And um, yeah, there's this intransparency and gaps of, of, of information widening and so on is uh, not helping with evaluation for a general public. For, for us as investors, I fully agree. It's talking to people, looking at the founders, um, seeing what other investors are, are doing with it because uh, yeah, the, the different levels of prices that are out there and different times, the lockup periods where it gets a bit mathematical, um, super important to, to see. Uh, the listing exchanges, as much as it's a hidden topic, but it plays a major crucial rule, uh, role. And um, yeah, I think these things you can only get firsthand this information and not out of the white paper. Um, which, uh, yeah, you can read or get the summary from, from one of the team members, basically. I just want to add uh, from engineering point of view that it really, um, it really makes sense to spend at least a few hours uh, meeting the team, see if they have enough engineer or any engineers there. And um, if there are engineers, check if they have smart contracts deployed. It's pretty uh, straightforward, it's all on Israel scan. So you could, you know, without even little knowledge, read it through and see if that works or not. And uh, because I've seen a lot of bullshit and I just don't want to, you know, repeat this for all the guys that coming in. Um, I would like to add just, um, I don't know what company you work for and I'm not going to ask you, but I'll just say that with regards to ICO rating websites uh, out there, more than 90% of them are corrupted in the most horrible way because you get rated after you pay for it. That's the first thing. Second, if you pay for it, you will be blackmailed after that to pay more. And if you don't pay more, then your score will go down. And the last part, which is the most horrible part, is that these ICO rating websites provide you with ICO advisors that join your team and then they put the pictures but if you ask the advisor what's their company's about or what's the experience of the teams you get the answer i have no idea and i've seen it happening a few times not just once not just twice a few times and uh, to add to that uh, about what my uh, colleague said here when you look at the team uh, obviously you need to check if the developers are able to deliver, like Sergey here mentioned, 
but also other issues that you need to look uh, after and you need to see about the other positions of the team. I, I see uh, uh, CMOs and marketing directors that they never had any marketing positions in their, in their life before. Why are you the marketing director of this ICO? Because you can raise $100 million. And the last thing that I would tell you is that if you find a way or a solution to your question, if you find an algorithm that can do it, I will be your first investor because there is nothing like that in the world at the moment. And if you ask me after you analyze the white paper or the team, and even if we don't talk about ICOs, even if we talk about, I call them regular startups from the old world startups, that I've been involved in that industry for a very long time. In the, at the end, it's a lot about your gut feeling. Doesn't matter what you analyze and what you'll check. And it, it's, it's if, if you have good chemistry with the founders, if you believe in them, and if you have a good gut feeling, like he mentioned, Netflix, who thought about it? I can give you like a hundred examples of, of, of colleagues of mine who, I even have a colleague that, says, that said no to Google <laughs> when, when they approached him. So, so it's, um, th th there's no set rules here. And um, do we need to finish? Okay, so uh, thank you everyone for uh, coming. Thank you, the speakers. Okay, thank you everyone. That was a great panel. Um, we won't have a break this time. We're moving on directly to pitching.